Chapter 19 Prisoners Bring News Officers at Fort Aswagachi in July 1779 were so hungry for news of the revolution that they quizzed 28 prisoners just taken in the vicinity of Fort Stanwix. The prisoner's chief spokesman was, according to Captain Fraser, a very sulky officer. The intelligence relayed by Fraser to General Haldeman at Quebec indicated that the British Army was within 15 miles of Charlestown. General Montre was determined to defend it, and General Lincoln was on his way to support Montre. The southern British Army numbled, numbered little more than 5,000 men. General Clinton had lately burned Elizabethtown and a great tract in New Jersey. The Fort Stanwix commanding officer's servant said General Washington was lately at close in that neighborhood. On July 1st, Clinton made two unsuccessful attempts to break a boom across the Hudson River at West Point, using in one attempt six frigates and in the other small vessels. He landed that evening and was making entrenchments and placing batteries within a mile of the fort there. He had gone with all the boats built last winter to Sterling by Crocken Lake and then proceeded up the Susquehanna River against the Five Nations. The prisoners had heard, however, that he was recalled to join Washington, who had permitted the rebel militiamen to go home to do their harvesting. Schuyler, with 5,000 men, was near Rhode Island. A bushel of wheat sold for 30 paper dollars, and no clothing could be had at any price. The rebel soldiers were threatening to mutiny on being told that their three-year enlistments, although expired, were being extended, and they must serve during the remainder of the war. Frazier also reported to Haldeman that Chief Little David, a Mohawk, with 14 Mohawks and Cayugas, had come to Carleton Island in early August, seeking Mississaugas and Canada Indians for a strike against the Oneidas. The Indian, Wanapus, was out with a war belt to collect any Indians hunting in the vicinity of Carleton Island. Carrying the message to Haldeman was a Delaware, described by Fraser as a man of a good deal of consequence among his people. Fraser, on behalf of Chief Little David, asked Haldeman for a laced coat to replace one stolen when the rebels plundered the chief's house. Little David cherished the garment, which had been given to him by General Gage. Fraser, greatly concerned because the Indians were obtaining double rations, wrote to Haldeman, there are a number of Five Nations Indians that are intermarried with those of Canada and have resided in the seven villages for years past and who are looked upon now as part of those villages. Whenever these are employed, they are furnished with necessaries and provisions by Colonel Campbell and they are said to receive the same also from Colonel Klaus as they address themselves to him as people belonging to the Five Nations. These double supplies, unless regulated, must cost government some thousands of pounds extraordinary expense and will occasion jealousy and discontent amongst the domestic Indians of the province. The number of these people cannot be determined, but they compose at least one-fourth of what are called Canada Indians. Out of 36, which go on this scout, 30 are these people.